Hello, it's Duncan. In this mini-series we've been comparing KTOR with HTTP for K, and now I'd like to be able to compare their throughput. I have some benchmarking code left over from the Coroutines and Loom episode, so it'd be nice to use that, but it's very much specialised to HTTP for K. I suppose I could just copy it for KTOR and then make edits, but where would the fun in that be? So today we're going to look at how to progressively refactor a method into a function, and then to generalise all the things so that it no longer depends on any HTTP for K types, and we can use it in other situations. Oh, and have IntelliJ automatically update the existing callers to use the new code as we make changes. Splendid! In my previous video on Kotlin coroutines and Loom, I wrote these throughput tests to see how quickly HTTP for K could process the requests that were blocking with different servers. I've run them here, and you can see that we could run a non-blocking function in about 0.2 of a second, but where the function blocks for a second, then we run out of threads in the thread pool and our requests per second go right down. But if we use Jetty and Loom, and therefore virtual threads, then we can process all a thousand requests in the one second that they all block for, and then just a little tiny bit of overhead. Now I'd like to reuse this benchmark function against Ktor, but at the moment it's very much tied to HTTP for K. So server configuration and handler and request and so on. I thought it would be interesting then to see how we can generalize this function and at the same time keep these tests running. So the first thing I think I'm going to do, you can see that this is currently in the throughput test class. It would be helpful if we could move it out of throughput tests and into a top-level function. And the things that are stopping us doing that are these purple things here, which are fields in our throughput tests. So we've got request count. Well, we can solve that problem by making that a parameter to this function. And we're going to call it a request count. And actually that refactor fails. I never know quite why, but we can fix it by making that the parameter. It's one there, and there's another one there. And now down here, we're assigning to report, which is again a field in our throughput tests. So we can't do that if we're going to move this out of throughput tests, so maybe we should just return it. But we'd like a refactor that meant we didn't have to go and edit the invocations. So let's go back, and what we're going to do just going to fold this away so we can see the top and bottom of this. There we go. What we'll do is we will move the report equals out of here. So we take it out of there, and then this block can still return the report, but we'll put that into there like that. Now then, it looks like it would be no harm to move these into that block, like that. And if we do, in fact, then we can join the declaration and assignment of that in there. And now this function is divided into two parts. There's this bit here that does the work and builds a report, and there's this bit that assigns it to the report field. So we should just be able to take this thing and make a function out of it, which we're going to call run lots2. And now I'm not quite sure why, but IntelliJ hasn't been clever enough to see that it needed to return this report from this block. So we'll put it in ourselves, say, return that. I think that should make the type of this report, and that makes everything compile. We'll just build for now to check that's true. And it is. Now, we spent a bit of time crafting the order of these parameters, so let's fix this up so it has the same order. So we want the server config to be the first thing. We want the handler to be the second thing, the request, the assertion, and then the request count. I think actually probably we should pull the request count all the way to the top. So let's do that. And we could do that last thing here as well. So we move the request count up. And now we should be able to take this thing and move it out of our test. Let's try that. Cut it from there and move it here. But it uses clear the pipe, so we need to move that up as well. Cut that and put it into build. Good. So now, if I just fold that away, we have a function that if we made public, we could move into another project because it doesn't depend on these tests. And these tests, well, they've changed a little tiny bit, but you can see we're just calling run lots here. That will assign to the report. And I think maybe we could just inline those. Do all five of them like that. One thing that seems to have happened though is we've, this has become a lambda. It was previously. If I undo, you can see that it was a method reference. 
don't know why IntelliJ does that, but we'll fix it up by hand. We'll come back in here and we'll say inline that. And then make that a reference. Make that a reference. Make that a reference. Oh. Um. And there we are done. Good. And there we go. We can see that runs to completion, which is good. Okay, look in run lots two. Let's look at the very inside of this loop. Here we're going from one to request count, and we're submitting a callable that asks the client to make a request. But it's not doing it just once, it's sitting in this loop, catching any errors, then adding them to our errors. Thinking about it, maybe we don't want to build this whole object inside our time to block here. We could solve that problem by moving the executor submit to the outside. So here we could say val, we'll call it callables, and we're going to take this out of here, which means that out of there. And now we can say executor dot, and there doesn't seem to be a submit all. So we'll have to write a for each. So we'll say callables for each executor dot submit it. That's not compiling oh, because for each is just a statement. What we actually want is to say map in there. Now then we can take this callable out of our time to block. So we'll take that out of there and put it into there. We might like to move it out of this block here altogether, but we can't because it requires the client that we're building here for the moment. We'll fix that in a minute, but first of all, I'm going to move up to the top and say maybe it shouldn't be this thing's job to start our handler as a server, this bit here and this use. Well, again, we'll just fold this away so we can see both ends of it. We'd like to extract the code in the middle here and have something on the outside call this handler as a server. It's complicated a bit by the fact that we've got this request for my port with server port here, and we're reporting the server port down here at the very end. So I'm going to move this request outside this stuff here, like that. And I think I'm going to say that I don't really care about the server port, in the report at least, so we can get rid of that. And that means that we just have to remove the port from there. And that will mean that we can't report where it is there. Okay, that's all good though. Now, back to run lots two. Now the server stuff is here and the non-server stuff is here. So I think we should be able to extract a method out of that. And we're going to call it run lots. I'm just going to go with three for now. What we think of what we've done. And now this is not request from my port. This is just the request. So now that's broken the dependency on the server. And this one now belongs to this throughput test here for HTTP for K. And this one is more general, which is good. So we will signal that by saying that this is the public function and this is our private one for this context. And I think this could just be called run lots. But run lots is still dependent on request and response and OK HTTP. Let's first break the dependency on OK HTTP. I'm going to do it by moving this OK HTTP use out around all this. I tend to mess up the brackets when I do this, but I found a good trick, which is to put a run around here. Run basically just sets up a scope. So if I put a run around all of that, like that, then it compiles. And now I can replace that run with OK HTTP use, like that. And now put the client in there. Now there are two clients, this one and that one, and I'm going to replace this one with a run, just to keep the blocks right. There we go. And now then I can look at this run and I can get rid of it because it's not doing anything. Doesn't seem to be a way to do that automatically. But I think I should just be able to move these before the run, like that, and move them there. And now the run is just a single expression so I can get rid of it like that. Now usefully that means that we can make this start time milliseconds join it with where we assign it there. That's good. And actually that 
points out, I think, that we're doing a little bit more in this timed block than we wanted to because we're also asserting this true. So let's just take this thing and move it out as a variable, which is did terminate. And then we can move that thing up there and just time it a little bit better than we were. And so this is our real block. We are setting up a timer. We're submitting all of our callables to an executor. We're asking it to shut down. We're waiting for it to shut down and then we're finishing our timer. Okay, so now how can we move OKHTTP OK out of this function? And the answer is, well, it's only used here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a lambda out of that and invoke it. That would be the same thing. And now we're going to pull this lambda as a variable. And I'm going to call this do request. And unfortunately, IntelliJ is broken a little bit there. It didn't notice that we still need to call it. But now this do request is basically constant. So we can move it all the way up there and things will still compile. There we go. Now we have the client left at the top. So if we were to take this thing from here to here and extract a method, it's called it report, but I think we could call it run lots from there. Now then we can say that's our request. We can lift this return out of here and into there like that. And now again, our more generic thing is this function. So we'll make this one public. Well, that's the default, so we'll get rid of it. And this one is private because it's only really about HTTP for K. It's also only called from here. So I think we could inline this in here. Oh, and I seem to have set that to not delete, so we'll delete that one. So now we have all the HTTP for K stuff in here and all of the general stuff in here. There's just one problem, and that's this response here, which is from HTTP for K. But I don't think we actually use it as a response anywhere in here now. So we should be able to say control T for refactor this, zero for type parameter, and say I want response as a type parameter. I'm going to call it R because it's the result or response type. And now we can replace the ones inside here. So. This assertion will be from whatever our R is to unit. This is a callable then of whatever our R is. Its result will be whatever our R is. This will be futures of whatever our R is. And we don't actually care that's a response, so we can get rid of that. And where this is called, well, we don't care about that either. Now, I think we might just call this operation. So we have an operation that returns a result, an assertion on that result, and how many times we want to do it. Little tiny thing here, I think we might here use list constructor, the one that takes a size, which is going to be request count, and a lambda for every item. And looking down through here, once we started, we clear the pipes, whatever that means. We set up a timer, we submit all the callables to the executor, we then shut down the executor. That should wait until everything is run. This is a very basic form of Java structured concurrency. We'll check it did terminate. We'll remember whether it did terminate. We'll remember when that happened. And then we'll run the assertions on the values from each of the futures that came back from our executor. Phew. I think maybe the flow would be slightly easier to see if we move the executor down there just before we clear the pipes. And then as for what this clear the pipes means, well, I suspect that depends on our use case as well. So perhaps we'll say that we want this thing itself to be a lambda that we invoke. Interesting that we can't do that there. Ah, I wonder whether this takes a lambda that's trying to bind to that. If I just move this up here. No, still not happy. Oh, well, we'll do it by hand. We'll say that if I have a function up here, that is before run. And that's a function that takes nothing and returns unit. We'll call that in here. And we don't need to say invoke. And that will have broken our caller, but only in one place. So this can be clear the pipes. And your average test might not want to do anything. So we can default that with a lambda that does nothing. I think we should make sure our names are nice and generic as well. So I'm just going to call this count. 
that means that we can call this count. And I think this is also quite generic, so we might make it public in order to bring it into our other project and call this request lots HTTP 4K because it builds an HTTP 4K server and it uses an HTTP 4K OK HTTP client. Does it actually work? And there we go, still the behavior we expect, which is that the slow non-blocking functions take one second for a thousand threads in parallel. One last wafer thin thing, which is at the moment our errors is a synchronized list. That means it will block on this ad. We'd really rather not do that, I think. So instead let's use a concurrent linked queue. And a concurrent linked queue is non-blocking as we add things. We can still add here, but the end is still iterable. So I think we should be able to say errors dot to list here. And to find out whether that's sensible, let's change our clear the pipes to not wait at all. And then we should see the errors we were getting before. If I run this, and here we have it again, lots of errors, which I think are caused by us just using the Mac TCP stack too hard. But now we've separated things, it will be interesting to run the same tests against Ktor and see whether it has the same issue. Just return this to a wait that makes that go away. And now we have a nice generic function here, run lots, that we can use with Ktor to compare throughput against HTTP for K, which we'll do next week. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe to the channel. Like this video because I like people liking my videos. And maybe even buy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.